Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a flounce top dress. As you can see, I've already tied the dress up using sinew and my sinew polar and matching caddy set from boredomwithjen.com. So what I'm doing right now is I'm marking out my pattern with washable markers. So I choose a starting point, usually around the hub of where all the ties come off of, and then I decide how many colors I'm going to use, and I just count out um, like however many spots making a mark. This is just going to help me down the road line things up so I can put my dye on the project. A project like this is where the swatches really come in handy. I'm able to color coordinate my pens, like the little dots that I made, with my color swatches. That way I can map out where I'm going to place my dye. And I'm just going to also position all of the dots as much as I can near one another. It's just going to make dye placement that much easier. And I'm just loosely securing it with a rubber band just to keep everything together. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. And for this particular dress, I was trying to channel the vibes of like Native American jewelry, turquoise with brown leathers and you know, just the blue and brown combo that you guys know I love so much. So these spoons I got from boredomwithjen.com. They are for right-handed people and I am a left-handed person, so it takes me a minute to get going. And with blue powders, a lot of them are very dense and super sticky, so they didn't really wanna come out of the container, the little spoon very well. So I found that if I tapped it, it just kind of like just came right out much easier. So it was like a two-handed project for me. And being that I'm left-handed with a right-handed spoon, it made application for me a breeze. Another thing to consider when using these spoons is, I know a lot of you like to mix your soda ash in with your dye. Currently at this time, I am not doing that anymore. Um, but I think if the dye powder was mixed with the soda ash, so what is it? It's the one fourth cup of soda ash to two to three teaspoons of dye. I think the dye would come out of these spoons a lot easier. And I may consider just for the sake of a tutorial, just to see the difference between the dye, if the soda ash helps. I really do think it will. And actually, I think Jen demonstrates it that way with mixed dye. So like I said, that's just something that I'm not doing. These folds are very thick and I wanna make sure to have maximum vibrancy. I don't want a lot of white left inside the folds. So I find that when mixing the dye and the soda ash together, I end up with a lot more white than I typically like. I only have four of the spoons and hindsight is 2020. Robin's Egg Blue would have been a perfect example of using soda ash mixed dye because Robin's Egg Blue already is a very light powdery granular type dye. So, well, like I said, hindsight's 2020.
So you see how easy the die application was for this one because I lined up my dots? Pretty much all of it went on in a straight line. Over to the left of the project is where they didn't line up that much and they're a little more random. And you know, really, you could just scrunch this project up any old way and add dye. That's the fun thing about these wraps. It's kind of like the more crazy you go, the better they turn out. Once I have my dye on the project the way that I like it, I like to give a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. Even though the project has been pre-soaked in the soda ash bucket, I'm going to be adding quite a bit of ice to the project, so I want to make sure the pH stays up around 10.5 to 11. And when I add my ice, I like to try to fill up the silicone cake molds. So this is a rather large project. So I emptied out my Frigidaire ice machine, the little bucket. This is off my old machine. And I had to wait for it to fill up again. So off camera, I did come back and add a second layer of ice. And then it's recommended that you let the project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. And I can tell you that this project batched for the full 48 hours. So I'm doing the same thing that I did in the last tutorial, the last geode sinew wrap, uh, where I'm untying it before I start the rinse out process. And if you guys didn't see that tutorial, go check it out. I explain more in detail what I'm talking about. And I also show how to tie one of these up. So. You want to start by using cold water. Cold water is going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. And then put it in some type of a linens bag, garment bag that's designed for the washing machine. I do have a link for one down below in the description box. It's a set and they work out great. Um, so check out the description box. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. And Kirilon is a professional textile detergent that I get from Derma Trading Company. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Derma. And with these rayon um, projects, I find that the Millsoft just really makes the fabric feel luxurious again. And then I let it air dry and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our flounce top dress after it's been washed and ironed and all that good jazz and Bella is wearing it and I think she looks beautiful. Now this dress is way too big for her. It's a 2X and Bella is a what? What do I say? She's a negative zero. Um, so I don't think it hangs on her quite properly, but you get the gist. I love the color combination. It's definitely giving me those Southwestern vibes. Like I said, the turquoise jewelry with the leather, um, the rust brown is like throwing off the Zion National Forest. I don't know. I just love this color combination. I need to remember to use the rust brown more often. It's the one I believe that's giving that nice red color and it's gorgeous. So um, it has a cute little side slit down at the bottom, which is nice because if it didn't, you'd have to like waddle when you walk. So it's nice and flowy and it's a really lightweight rayon. So it's very luxurious and soft, but also sturdy. So this held up through the dyeing process very well. That's one thing with the Dharma blanks. Some of them are terrible. Some of them cannot withstand the dyeing process. Others take it like a champ. So I would definitely buy this dress again. Overall, I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing!